Good morning, ladies. React is a web framework that is built to extend what is known as vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So in layman's terms, something built to fix a problem that never needed to be fixed. Congratulations. React is a component-based framework, meaning it uses a write once, use everywhere principle. So a div, that can be a component. A login form shown to the user, a component. But components can't be functions, but components are declared in functions. What the hell am I talking about? Let me, let me break it down for you. To declare a component, you create a new vanilla JavaScript function. This function runs the code that is declared inside of it until it gets to the return statement. Inside, the programmer will write their JSX code, more on this garbage in a minute, that will be rendered to the DOM. What does DOM mean? I don't fucking know. I think it's a name for someone. The programmer can declare more functions inside the component function that run on render. Continuing on from this, the programmer can choose to write their own functions inside the component, or they can use hooks. Hooks are a collection of predetermined overloadable functions that are called at a specific point during the life cycle of the program. For instance, the use effect hook is called when the component is first rendered. The use effect hook is called when the component is first mounted. So if the JSX written inside the return statement needs data from a database, for instance, you could use the use effect hook to grab this data and have it ready for when the JSX code is rendered to the user. Look, I know my outfit is different, but I went to bed. This YouTube shit is hard, okay? Now I want to introduce you to everyone's favorite programming language that isn't a language, JSX. JSX, or JavaScript XML, if you go to Harvard, is a compilation of HTML that allows the programmer to insert snippets of JavaScript using curly bracket notation. Well, since the textbook definition of JSX means nothing to either of us, let me give you an example. Let's bring the database example provided earlier back into context. If I queried a user's name from the database, I could put the JavaScript variable that the name is stored in inside of the curly brackets and wrap it with an HTML tag. Here's what that would look like. And after you get the rest of the code written right, because I know your ass didn't do it right the first time, JSX will compile the provided JavaScript variable into your HTML. Continuing on, let's talk about state. No, not that kind of state. What the, f Wyoming isn't even a state. State in React is a way to track and manipulate data that is bound to change throughout the execution of the program. When state is initialized, you prefix the variable with const. Not sure why, just do it. Then inside of the brackets, you insert the state variable and a name for a new callback function. This variable and its function are like your hot stepmom and her even hotter friend. They just go together. After the variable name, use the useState hook, hopefully you listened to what I said earlier about hooks, to compile the names into a stateful variable. Throughout the rest of the program, you can use this state variable as a storage point for data. For example, let's say we have a state variable for a user's level in an online game. This data will be stored in the first variable we declared. If the user were to level up, we would call the callback function, the second name we declared earlier. Now this is important, so listen up. When the programmer changes the state of the variable, a re-render is called. So what does this mean? This means that if the user were to level up, the area of the HTML that is using the stateful variable will be re-rendered on top of the rest of the code inside the component. Remembering this is important when developing React apps. You do not want to be one of the idiots who makes an ever-rendering loop that pings an AWS service 5 million times a second, causing you to incur generational debt because you didn't listen to me yap about stateful variables. Now this is all great, but there's only one thing in this world that's better than state, and that's props. Props or properties are a way to pass data through your component structure to other components that need this data. However, this comes with some caveats. As mentioned earlier, React is a component-based framework, meaning it uses a component tree that looks something like this. How this correlates to props is that the programmer can only pass props down the component tree, never up. Consider it like casting a net down from the component that instantiates the prop variable. You can pass props as far down the component tree as you'd like, but never back up, unless you use a state management technology like Redux. Consider this component tree. You would want to hold the most global information at the top in your app component. In my experience, I found that I always store my themes here and sometimes the data for the current user of your application if that's applicable to your use case. Now that I've given you all the information you need to create a React app, I wanna give you some insight into my thoughts about it and how it applies to my workflow and how I use it on a daily basis. Eight out of 10, it's all right. <laughs>